If you're a diabetic man, then you're more likely to suffer from erectile dysfunction. If you're a diabetic man and you have erectile dysfunction, it's more likely that things like pills and penile injection therapy won't be effective. And if you're a diabetic man and you're going to move on to penile implant surgery to treat your erectile dysfunction, then you have a higher risk for infection. Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Christine with Urology Centers of Alabama. I'm Director of Prosthetic Urology and Sexual Health at Urology Centers. And today on the Erection Connection, we're gonna talk about diabetes and erectile dysfunction. Over 100 million men in the United States have diabetes, and about 95% of these have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the diabetes that's associated with advancing age and associated with increased body fat and increased body weight. Diabetes is the abnormally persistent elevated levels of blood sugar. This elevated level of sugar in the blood can damage the arteries that carry blood to the penis during an erection. The elevated blood sugar levels will damage the nerves that are involved with erection and the nerves that are involved with carrying sensation to the penile tissue. And the elevated sugar levels will damage the tissue in the penis that fills with blood during an erection. So diabetes can absolutely cause erectile dysfunction. In fact, diabetes and hypertension are the two most common causes of erectile dysfunction. We know that penile implants have the highest patient satisfaction in the treatment of ED. Penile implants are very safe, they're reliable. Patients and their spouses or partners love penile implants as a treatment for ED. But there is gonna be an increased risk of infection in the diabetic male. My job is that when I have a man who has diabetes who's looking at penile implant surgery, I've gotta do everything that I can do and encourage the patient to do everything that he can do to lower the potential for infection and to raise the potential for a successful, satisfying outcome. Hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that we use to check sugar control. The level of hemoglobin A1C will tell us what the sugar control has been like over the past three months. A lower A1C level is better than a higher A1C level. And in my practice, I want the A1C level to be 7.5 or less. Now, if we check a patient's A1C and it's greater than 7.5, we don't schedule their surgery. We send them to their diabetic doctor and we say, what are the things that we can do with this patient to get that A1C level better? When that level is 7.5 or less, we'll go ahead and schedule the penile implant surgery. We have all of our patients, especially men with diabetes, wash themselves with a surgical scrub solution, the penis and the scrotum and the lower abdomen in the week prior to implant surgery. What we're trying to do is kill off skin bacteria that could potentially cause an implant infection. At the time of surgery, we give all of our penile implant patients IV antibiotics, and in the diabetic men, we give them an additional IV medication specifically designed to prevent yeast or fungal infections. All of our men who have penile implants will be placed on antibiotic tablets after surgery, but in the men who are diabetic, we keep them on the tablets a little bit longer. Now, in the majority of my patients, I use an infrapubic incision. That's a very small incision at the base of the penis. And the benefit of this incision is that it tends to cause less swelling, less pain, less bleeding, and men with an infrapubic incision are able to get back to normal activities much sooner. In my practice, men who've had an infrapubic incision after their penile implant surgery come back at about three weeks, and we teach the patients how to inflate and deflate the implant, and they can begin to use it for sexual activity. Guys, diabetics, you've got to do your part to get ready for penile implant surgery, just like I've got to do my part. Antibiotic impregnation on the surface of penile implants has been probably the greatest innovation to decrease the potential infection for all patients, especially diabetics. In this image you're seeing, you'll notice the golden color of the implant cylinders. That's because of the antibiotic coating. We always, always, always use a penile implant with antibiotic coating. Lastly, we consistently strive for efficiency and excellence in the operating room. If you're having a first time penile implant or even the removal and replacement of a device that's worn out over time, you can expect a surgery time of 30 minutes or less. But our goal is to be very efficient in the operating room and to have the shortest operative time possible, not by rushing the case, 
but by being efficient and doing the right thing. And if you've paid attention and you've watched prior episodes of the Erection Connection, then you know that my operative team is consistent. In other words, when you come into my operating feeders, it's going to be the same scrub nurse. It's going to be the same circulating nurse. It's going to be the same assistant working across the table from me during these surgeries. I really believe that this consistency in the operative team works to lower infection rates. Diabetes is a serious disease that can and does cause erectile dysfunction. But the success rates of treating ED in diabetic men are the highest they've ever been. And infection rates after penile implant surgery in diabetic men are the lowest they've ever been. Visit my website, www.drbriancristine.com to learn more about erectile dysfunction, urinary incontinence after prostate cancer, Peyronie's disease, low testosterone levels, genital aesthetic surgery, and all the things that I treat. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Brian Christine. The more subscribers we get, the more we can do with YouTube and get our message out to a wider audience. I'll see you next time for the next episode of The Erection Connection.